Excellent. We are ready experts in fill layers. So let's move on to the borders, which work similarly to fills. Select an object, like this, making up the portfolio section. Then go to borders and have a look at the settings options. You'll see they are almost the same as the field settings. We can select a solid field, linear gradient, radial or angular. In fact, it's something new because most of the design tools only let us apply solid fields to our borders. The different color settings are displayed in this pop-up menu. Color picker, RGBA codes, global and document colors. The only difference is that we can apply a specific blending mode to the border, which is quite useful in certain, certain occasions. Let's apply a light grey border to these elements. Press Ctrl-C to activate the eyedropper and select the color. I'm going to use the background color of the About Me section. Its hex code is F5F5F5. Select it. Apart from the color, we can modify the border thickness and the position where we want the border to be applied. From the center to the outside or the inside. But what's the difference between them? Well, let's have an in-depth look. First, set thickness at 6. Then select the option inside Let's zoom in so that you can see the difference, okay? What happens when we increase the thickness? That it increases towards the inside, overlapping the image. If we select outside, the image is no longer overlapped and it is the border size what increases. Can you see it? Let's use our darker tone to see it clearer. With inside, the image area is smaller and with the outside option, the actual size is restored. Have a look at the inspector panel and particularly at the size of the shape. This is the size of the cycle which has been increased after adding more thickness. This means that when exporting this image to use it in our website, we need to bear in mind that its size has been increased by 30 pixels because of the border, 15 pixels for each side. Okay? The center option, as you may guess, is halfway between the outside and the inside options. So again, if we export the shape, the cycle we get will be also bigger in size. Guys, keep this in mind when using this feature since it will modify the size of your objects. Let's reduce the thickness to 6 pixels. Select the outside position and pick a lighter color. Not too subtle since it won't be appreciated. Something intermediate, okay? So that's why I'm going to take to pick this one. Okay. Next to the plus sign, there is another icon, a kind of wheel, right? That we are going to use to adjust other parameters. Go outside the artboard and draw quickly aligned with the vector tool in order to explore other border settings. Change the thickness to 80 pixels to see it clearer. As you can see, it's an open path, not a closed shape as we did before. This implies that the line has a beginning and an end, and some points in between. So here we can change the ends, okay, and decide if we want them to be round cap or projecting cap, which are different options. At the same time, we can also modify the joints so that they are pointy, rounded, or create a chamfered edge. 
We are working with an open path, so we have the ability to modify the start and the end of the path. Like a cycle for the start and an arrow for the end. Let's reduce the thickness to 8. And this is, this is the result we got. It's quite, quite useful when working with complex layouts, with lots of pages and sections, and we want to indicate how to move from a screen to another, for instance. It's a popular feature within user experience and interfa interface design, and it's called user flows. In the fields below, we can decide whether we want our line to be dotted or dashed instead of a straight line. For this, we need to alter the dash value and the gap value. Let's choose a dotted line and select a rounded joint. Insert a low value in the dash field and wide gap, like 20. Let's zoom in. If we want our line to be dashed, just increase the dash and keep playing around with the dash and gap values until getting the desired effect. Guys, it's just an example, okay? So let's remove all this. And we are going to continue working with the borders of the portfolio images, okay? Perfect. So, copy the color of this border and select the other three cycles with Command and click. After that, set the border's thickness to 6 and an outside position so that they look like the same. So, this has been all about borders. Okay, so see you in the next video. Bye!